for many colleges and universities, we're a little more than a month now, if not more, into the fall semester, and a lot of different colleges have been handling it differently. Let's talk to the head of one system. Mark Ojekian is president of the Connecticut State Colleges and University System, and our own Arti Swaminathan is joining us as well. She covers education for us. Mark, thank you for joining us. You have 17 um, institutions in the system, 85,000 students. Your institutions are open. You've got lots of different measures in place. Um, First of all, just tell us how it's been going so far. We've seen lots of pictures across the country of a lot of students in tight quarters, at parties, at football games, et cetera. What's happening in Connecticut? Well, in Connecticut so far, um, things are going relatively well. Um, We always knew there were going to be cases um, that would, um, would rise, Um, but we did a lot of planning beginning back in March. Um, So we've opened with different modalities for our students. We have dorms um, open and students living in the dorms. Uh, So we we are very um, optimistic that we'll be able to continue through Thanksgiving when then we will go completely virtually and then um, uh, come back late in January. So, so far, so good. Hey, Mark. So I was just looking at some of the documents and you've projected a 50 percent drop in reserves for community colleges. And, you know, there's some financial difficulties you're dealing with retirements, layoffs. So how much cost cutting have you already had to undertake? And what are some of the changes you've made on a management side? Well, we've done we've done a lot of cost cutting um, in terms of, you know, reducing overtime, hiring freezes, uh, taking a look at adjunct professors versus full time uh, professors. Um, we are engaged in a consolidation effort here in Connecticut for our community colleges. So we've established the Connecticut State Community College, which will be accredited hopefully in 2023 for full operation. Um, so we've made a lot of changes already. Um, that being said, our reserves are thin and we need to do um, more in terms of uh, salary and benefit costs uh, for all of our Um, employees. So we have um, reached out to our collective bargaining partners and asked them to come to the table to try to find a way to sort of mitigate, you know, the gap. The enrollments are down. I mean, it's no uh, surprise around the country enrollments are down. And so when you have especially enrollments down at residential institutions and you're losing room and board revenue, um, it's not surprising that you're going to see the serious financial challenges that, that we currently have in our system. Mark, after the pandemic, what does the system look like? Do we really need a campus-based college or university system after we get out of this? Um, I think we do, but I think, I think we've learned lessons in how to have high flex or hybrid models. Um, remember, especially at our, at our community colleges, which serve the most vulnerable of our populations, um, single mothers, folks that work, Um, they need to go to those campuses and be fully engaged in those opportunities. So our consolidation effort is around making sure, excuse me, making sure that we have all of the programs available to all of our students um, and that we're able to provide the services that we need. But clearly the pandemic has taught us how to do things virtually. And I think that'll be in our best interest moving forward. Hey, Mark, so, you know, a lot of schools, different schools are feeling pain differently, right? So who do you think is best positioned to come out of this storm? Do you think that private universities have sort of an edge over community colleges, state colleges? Uh, No, I don't I don't necessarily think one has an advantage over the other. I mean, everybody is struggling with financial issues. Um, Excuse me. And so I think that as we um, come out of the pandemic, um, you're going to see vulnerable institutions Um, having to consider closing or merging. Um, There were vulnerable institutions before this occurred, but I think we are working with our state partners, with the governor and the legislature, because public higher education in Connecticut um, is critical, and it's critical as we try to um, rebound economically. Um, The governor recently came out with his strategic plan for workforce, and our colleges and universities are the engines that are going to help um, really um, start back up our economic development strategies in, in the future. Mark, I am curious as well, coming out of this, if 
things like community colleges and state universities are going to be a better value proposition for some folks? I mean, is that something that you are going to incorporate into marketing, for example, and, and really do a push, not even just coming out of it, but but why not start now uh, with that kind of messaging? Well, we've actually started that messaging before the pandemic, and we did an economic analysis of all of our institutions and what the value was, not only to the student and their families, but to the state of Connecticut. So that is starting to resonate. We have free community college now in Connecticut. And so we've seen, I think, uh, 4,800 people sign up in the fall to go for free. I would say maybe a third of those already were eligible for full Pell. Um, But the marketing is being incorporated into the value proposition, high quality, um, good success rates at our universities and colleges. We need to do better, um, but also the value um, in terms of tuition and fees is much lower than than private institutions. And so we, we will continue to market that as we move forward. 